Hi, this is Geometry Lesson 1-5, Conditional Statements. In this lesson, we'll be able to write conditionals and biconditionals and find their truth values. What are conditionals and biconditionals? We'll see. Explore and reason. If-then statements show a cause and effect. The table shows some if-then statements. If something happens, then something happens. There is a cause and, a, and an effect for a lot of things in life. So if you look at these diagram and examples, there are some causes and the effects corresponding to those causes. If it's raining, then it's spring. Is it always true? Hmm, we don't know. If x and y are whole numbers, then their difference, x minus y, is a whole number. Is it always true? Hmm, we gotta test that. If water is heated, then it boils. Is it always true? If a tri triangle has a right angle, then it is a right triangle. If your favorite color is blue, then you're a good speller. Okay. Part A. Determine whether each effect is always true for the given cause or is not necessarily true for the given cause. For the effects that are not necessarily true, how could you change them to make them always true? So let's look at them one by one. If it's raining, then is it spring? Is it always true? Well, I, there's, there's a lot of rainy days in the summer too, and even in winter it's raining. So if it's raining, is it always spring? Not really. Right? They're not necessarily true. How could you change them to make them always true? How can we change them? If it's raining, then what? Then we can say, then the ground gets wet. And that's always true. You know, that, that's an effect directly from the cause that is that is caused from the rain, right? Um, yeah, so we can change it like that. Um, or we could choose a conditional statement, say, if it's raining between winter and summer, then it must be spring, right? The only season between winter and summer is spring. So if we add a conditional like that, it becomes always true, okay? Um, number two, we can change the term whole numbers to integers to make this always true, okay? Um, yeah, because, yeah because it's not always true uh, to have a difference that is always a whole number, right? Because whole number doesn't mean you're going to get a negative. So if you have 1 minus 3, then you get a negative 2. Negative 2 is not a whole number because it's a negative number. Whole number only has positive numbers. And so you can change that to an integer, right? If it's raining between winter and summer, um, and we can change this to integers, then, then uh, the difference is a, an integer. Okay? If the water is heated, then does it always boil? No. If When does it boil? When it's heated to 100 degrees Celsius. Then it's always true that it boils. The triangle has a right angle. Is it always a right triangle? Yeah. This one is always true. Mm -hmm. If your favorite color is blue, then are you a good speller? Not necessarily. How can you change? 
uh, you can change the effect. Your favorite color is blue, uh, then your favorite color is not green, or your favorite color is not yellow. So you don't, you're not always a good speller if your favorite color is blue. You can change then your favorite color is not yellow. I know it sounds very obvious and uh, nobody might want to hear this statement, <laughs> but, but yeah, and it feels like we're repeating the, the, the cause, but still, like, this, this always works, right? It's, it's always true. So part B, write some if-then statements of your own. Write two statements that are always true and two statements that are not necessarily true. Write your own statement. Okay. So I'm not going to write this for you. Figure out your own if-then statements in your notes. Okay, let's think about the essential question. How do if-then statements describe mathematical relationships? Let's look at the concept, conditional statement. A conditional is an if-then statement that relays a hypothesis, hypothesis, the part that follows if, to a conclusion, the part that follows then. So in the if-then statement, if, is the hypothesis, and the then is the conclusion, okay? If something something is the hypothesis part, then something something is the conclusion part. So these are the vocabulary that you need to know in order to follow our lesson. Conditional can be represented as P, arrow, Q, red as if P, then Q, okay? This is the, an important notation in geometry, where P represents the hypothesis and Q represents the conclusion. All right, let's look at example one. Write a conditional statement. Write each statement as a conditional. Part A, you can register to vote if you're at least 18 years old. So let's separate this into if-then statement. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion. You can register to vote if you're at least 18 years old. So what is the cause? What is the effect? If you're at least 18 years old, that's your cause. Then you can register to vote. That is your effect. So your hypothesis must be if you're at least 18 years old. Your conclusion is then you may register to vote. Okay. So practice dividing your cause and effect and labeling hypothesis versus conclusion, okay? Practice, practice. That is called a conditional statement, okay? Writing a sentence into a conditional always starts with if, comma, then. Part B, a square must have four congruent sides. Hypo identify the hypothesis and conclusion. Hypothesis must be a square, right? Polygon must be a square. And then conclusion. Then it must have four, four congruent sides. So conditional statement. If a polygon is a square, then it has four congruent sides. So sometimes you might have to add a few words. But you can't just say if square, right? What, what square? If a polygon is a square, okay? So look at the look at the statement and see if you need to add anything to write a conditional. Try number one. Now it's your turn. See if you can write each statement as a conditional. So pause the video, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Change these statements into a conditional statement. You need to write if the end statement. So identify the hypo hypothesis and conclusion. Which one is a hypothesis? If a triangle has all angles congruent, then it is an equilateral triangle. 
And it actually works the other way too. If a triangle is an equilateral triangle, then the triangle has all angles are congruent. Okay? In this case, it works the other way around. So either way works. But I'm going to write one. If a triangle has all angles congruent, then it is an equal lateral triangle. Okay. Alberto can go to the movies if he washes the car. Now it's obvious which one is hypothesis. If he washes car, then he can go to the movies. And the order matters in this case because if he goes to the movies first and then he washes the car, that is that might not be the order that uh, his mom wants. So you have to make sure the order is in place. If Alberto washes the car, then he can go would be the correct conditional statement. Check your answers. Got it correct. Good job. Let's move on to example two. Find the truth value of a conditional. The truth value of a statement is true, T, or false, F, according to whether the statement is true or false, respectively. A truth table lists all the possible combinations of truth values for two or more statements. So the truth value is referring to T or F, representing true and false. And then the truth table. We're going to practice making truth table for P, then Q. So uh, this is a conditional statement. We're going to separate them into a hypothesis column, the conclusion column, and a conditional column. Is hypothesis true? Is it always true? And is the conclusion true? Is the conditional statement true? Okay? Sometimes not all of them are true. Sometimes they're all true. Sometimes some of them are true. Some of them are not. Okay? Um, this is called a truth table. Why do we need this? We'll use it to see if, uh, if, if, it's, if it's always true or not, if, it's, if the conditional statement is reliable. Okay, we can use that, um, and it's very useful. So how can you determine the truth value for each conditional? If a number is even, let's look at some examples. If a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. An even number is always divisible by 2, right? When the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is always true. So if your hypothesis is true and your conclusion is true, then your conditional is always true. And if a hypothesis is true, but conclusion is not true, if it's false, then your conditional is not true, it's false. That's like counterexample. You're making a hypothesis that also is true, but your conclusion is not true, so the statement is false. Okay? And if your hypothesis is false, but your conclusion turns out to be true, then your conclusion is true. Hypothesis is false and conclusion is false as well. Then your conditional statement is true. Does that make sense? So your conditional statement is always true even when your hypothesis is false. But when your hypothesis is true and your conclusion is false, then your conditional statement must be false. Okay? So that's how you determine if your conditional is always true or false. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of congruent angles, then it's a parallelogram. So assume the hypothesis of quadrilateral that has two pairs of congruent angles is true. To decide whether the conclusion is true, you can determine whether the quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. So if you look at an isosceles trapezoid here, it has two pairs of congruent angles, but it's not a parallelogram because it only has one pair of parallel sides. So the conclusion is false. If a hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false, then your conditional statement must be false. So the conditional is false. This is how you can also prove that a conditional statement is false. 
So try number two. What is the truth value of each conditional? Explain your reasoning. Try making your truth value and reason out if the conditional is true or false using the truth table. Okay, are you ready for answers? All right, part A. If a quadrilateral has a right angle, then it is a rectangle, okay? The conditional is a quadrilateral has a right angle. Quadrilateral is any polygon that has four sides. And does it always have to be a rectangle? So it says a right angle. Doesn't mean you should have four right angles, right? So what if you have one right angle and then the other angles are not? So what if you have one right angle and then the other angles are like not, right? Is it a rectangle? No, not a rectangle, not a rectangle. Your hypothesis is true, but your, uh, your conclusion is false. So your, your P is true, Q is false. If P then Q then must be false. So your conditional statement is false. And that's your counterexample. Part B, if X is the midpoint of line segment AB, then X lies on AB, okay? Here's A and B. If X is the midpoint of AB, then X lies on AB. By definition, midpoint has to lie uh, on the segment AB. So it must be true, right? So true, by the definition of a midpoint of a statement, it must be a point on the statement. Okay? Let's look at another concept, related conditional statements. So, these are some vocabulary words. Conditional has a hypothesis and a conclusion. So this is already a that definition uh, vocab that we have looked at. Conditional has hypothesis and conclusion. Okay, P, if P, then Q. And then what if we switch orders? The converse reverses the hypothesis and the conclusion of the conditional. So instead of saying if P, then Q, we're going to change the order and say if Q, then P. Okay, we're switching P and Q. That is called the converse, not a conditional statement. Okay, converse of the conditional statement is switching the P's and Q, the hypothesis and conclusion of the original conditional statement. Negation. Negation of a statement has the opposite meaning of the original statement. It says not P. Okay, not P. Inverse, so negation is, is not a statement. It's just saying not P, okay? It's not a hypothesis. The inverse is obtained by negating both a hypothesis and a conclusion of a conditional, right? So this is a negation of the hypothesis. That's, a, that's the negation of the uh, conclusion. We're saying if not P, then not Q, okay? If hypothesis is not then conclusion is not. That's called the inverse. Contrapositive is the converse of the inverse. So we're changing the order, but with the negation, okay? If not Q, then not P. That's called a contrapositive. Let's look at example three. Write and evaluate the truth value of a converse. We're going to write and determine the truth value of the converse of the conditional. If you play the trumpet, okay, notice that's the hypothesis, then you can play a brass instrument. Notice that's the conclusion. To write the converse, you can reverse the hypothesis and conclusion. So this is your conditional. If P, then Q. 
converse is if not Q, then not P. So change it. If not this, then not this. So if you don't play a brass in instrument, then you don't play the trumpet. Wait, that's contrapositive. I'm so sorry. The converse is if, if Q, then P, right? You just change the order. Then you say, if you play the brass instrument, then you play the trumpet, okay? Uh, try number three. Write, the, write and determine the truth value of the converse of the conditional. If a polygon is quadrilateral, then it has four sides. That's the conditional statement. Write the converse. B, if two angles are complementary, then their angle measures add to 90. Write the converse of them. Change your hypothesis and conclusion. See if you can get it by yourself. Are you ready to check answers? Okay. So how do we write a conditional for part A? If, your conclusion, if, if a polygon has four sides, then what? It is a quadrilateral. It's your converse. What about part B? If, what's your conclusion? Two angle measures add to 90, then they are complementary. Okay, that's the converse. Example four, write and evaluate the truth value of an inverse and contrapositive. So write and determine the truth value of the inverse and contrapositive of the conditional SS, if two whole numbers are both even, then their sum is even. So your conditional, your P, hypothesis is two whole numbers are both even. Your conclusion, Q, the sum of two whole numbers is even. So negation would be the two whole numbers are not both even. Negation of conclusion is the sum of two whole numbers are not even. So the inverse will say, if not P, then not Q. Contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. So if two whole numbers are not both even, then their sum is not even, would be the inverse statement. And then if the sum of two whole numbers is not even, then the numbers are not both even, would be the contrapositive statement. Are they true? The inverse is false because a counterexample exists. If two whole numbers are not both even, so like 3 and 5, they're both odd, then their sum is not even. The sum is even, 8, right? Even 5 and 7. 5 plus 7 is even number 12. So the inverse is not correct. It's not true, okay? What about the contrapositive? The contrapositive is true. The sum of two whole numbers are not even. So if the if uh, the sum of whole numbers is not even like odd. So uh, if you add and then you get an odd number like 13, so 7 and um, 6 could make a 13, all right? Then the numbers are not both even. Could we have a counterexample? No. If you have both even, they're always going to be, uh, they're always going to be even. But if you have one even and one odd, then it's, a, it's not even, it's odd, okay? So the contrapositive is true. All right, so let's try number four. Write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Write the truth value of each. So this is a conditional statement. Try to figure out what is the hypothesis and what the co conclusion is, and write the inverse, write the converse inverse and the contrapositive, and see if they're true statements. Pause the video. Come back when you're ready for answers.
Okay, are you ready? So, have you determined the, hypo the hypothesis and the conclusion? Yeah, today is a weekend day, that's your hypothesis P. Then tomorrow is Monday, that's your conclusion Q. So, what is your converse? First of all, how do you write converse? You just switch the P and Q. So, converse would be P, then, wait, instead of P, then Q, you have Q, then P. So, converse would be if tomorrow is Monday, then today is a weekend day. Okay, that's the converse. Okay, what about the inverse? How do you write an inverse? Inverse statement is when you have a negation of your P, then not Q. Okay, so how do you write the inverse for this statement? If today is not a weekend day, then tomorrow is not Monday. Okay, that would be our inverse statement. And what's left? What about the contrapositive? Contrapositive is when you write, if not Q, then not P. Right? So you can say, if tomorrow is not Monday, then today is not a weekend. Okay, let's see if they're true. If tomorrow is Monday, then today is a weekend day. Is that true? The, the con, if tomorrow is Monday, then today is a Sunday. So today must be a weekend day. So it's true, right? Uh, inverse, if today is not a weekend day, then tomorrow is not Monday. If today is not a weekend day, then it's Monday through Friday, right? Then tomorrow is not Monday. Is it always, is it always true? Um, yeah, right? If today is not a weekend day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, all tomorrow uh, will, will be uh, not Monday. The only day where tomorrow is, is Monday would be Sunday, right? So if today is not a weekend day, then tomorrow is not Monday must also be true. Yeah. What about contrapositive? If tomorrow is not Monday, then today is not a weekend day. So what if you have a con counterexample like Saturday? right? So then tomorrow is Sunday, so it's not Monday, so your hypothesis is true, but today is not a weekend day, that's false. Today is weekend, right? Saturday is weekend. So there is a counterexample for that, so that is false. Example, Saturday, right? What about your conditional then? If today is a weekend day, Saturday or Sunday, then tomorrow is Monday. What if you have a Saturday? Then tomorrow is uh, then tomorrow is Sunday, so this is not true either. So if you notice, your con contrapositive and your conditional always go together. If your conditional is true, then your contrapositive is true. Your conditional is false, and your contrapositive is also false. Let's look at some concept. By conditional statement. A biconditional is the combination of a conditional, P then Q, and its converse, Q then P. The resulting compound statement, P then Q, or if P if Q then P is read as P if and only if Q. Okay? P if and only if Q means it goes both ways. It works both ways. So when P and Q have the same truth value, the biconditional is true. When they have opposite truth values, it is false. So if it works 
one way but it doesn't work the other so if this is true but that's false your biconditional is false it doesn't work it has to work all the time okay so if p then q that's true that's true this is true if true false then that's false if false true that's false if that's false and that's also false then yes that's true okay they need to be the same in order for the biconditional to be true all right let's look at example five write and evaluate a biconditional a marine bi uh, biologist writes this conditional if a seahorse gives birth then it is a male since it is true that among seahorses only the males can become pregnant and get birth Interesting. Should a marine biologist state this as a biconditional in a paper she is writing? So first, formulate our plan. Identify the hypothesis P and the conclusion Q in a conditional. We're going to combine the conditionals P then Q then and if Q then P in the form P if and only if Q to write the biconditional. And then we're going to evaluate the truth value of the biconditional. So, our hypothesis is that a seahorse gives birth. And our Q, uh, our conclusion is that a seahorse is male. Our biconditional is read, a seahorse gives birth if and only if it is male. Let's see if the truth value of the uh, biconditional. Um, so, if P, then Q. If a seahorse gives birth, then it is male. Yeah, that's true. If a seahorse is male, then it, then it gives birth. Does it always give birth? What if they don't give birth? There might be cases where they don't give birth, and maybe they die, and maybe they just don't, right? So that might not be always true. I mean, if the seahorse is male, then yeah, like they could give birth, but they don't always do it. Then it, then so this, this doesn't work. So um, because if Q then P doesn't work, the pi conditional is not true. The biologist should not include the statement as a bi conditional in her paper. Okay? So try number five. Write a bi conditional for the following conditional. And what is its truth value? Okay. So if you can do it by yourself back when you're ready for answers. All right, are we ready? So write the biconditional statement and see if it's true or not. Okay, check if it's true both ways. So you can figure out that if two lines intersect at right angles would be the hypothesis, so that's P, then their perpendicular is the conclusion, so that's Q. Okay, so biconditional statement would be what? Biconditional statement would be two lines intersect at right angles if and only if they are perpendicular. Okay, check if it's true by checking both conditional and the converse. So, is this true? Two, uh, if two lines intersect at right angles and they're perpendicular, by definition, yes, it's true. What about if P then Q? If they're perpendicular, then two lines at if they, uh, then they, the two lines intersect at right angles. Yes, by definition, that is also true. So the biconditional is true because they're both true. So biconditional is true. Okay, check your answer. You got it correct. Good job. Let's look at example six. Identify the conditionals in a biconditional. What are the two conditionals implied by the biconditional? A triangle is equilateral if and only if it has three congruent sides. So what does that mean? We're going to identify the two statements in the biconditional. 
So a triangle is, an, is equilateral, could be our hypothesis, and a triangle has three congruent sides, could be our conclusion. We're going to write the two conditionals saying, if P then Q, and if Q then P. So we're saying, if a triangle is equilateral, then it has three congruent sides, and that's, that's true. If a triangle has three congruent sides, then it is equilateral, and that's also true. So that is the biconditional saying, if and only if. So both ways, it, it is true. Okay? So let's look at try number six. And remember that because the conditionals that form the a true biconditional are also true, you can choose either part of the biconditional as the hypothesis and the other part as the conclusion. So it doesn't matter if you choose uh, the first part as Q or the second part as P. Okay, it could, it doesn't matter. Let's look at try number six. What are the two conditionals implied by the biconditional? Uh, say if you can write the two conditional uh, statements using uh, the biconditional. See if you can write it by yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? We're almost done. Let's check our answers. So, uh, we, you can identify P and Q, and again, it doesn't matter which one is P, which one is Q, because it works both ways. As long as you have both conditionals, then you're good. So the product of two numbers is negative, could be P or Q, uh, and the numbers have opposite signs, could be Q, and you can write If the product of two numbers is negative, then the numbers have opposite signs. Will be our first conditional. Okay. P, if P then Q, and then if Q then P, would be if two numbers have opposite signs, then their product is negative. Okay? As long as you have these two conditional statements, it doesn't matter whether you chose this as a P or that as a Q, as a Q okay? As long as you have these two. All right, that's it for our lesson today. Let's summarize our lesson. Conditional statements. There were a lot of vocabularies um, involved in truth tables and the truth value. Uh, but in summary, we start with conditional. We have a hypothesis and a conclusion Q. Okay, if P, then Q. And th those are the symbols. Converse statement changes your P and Q. If Q, then P. Inverse is negating your conditional. If not P, then not Q. Contrapositive is negating uh, your negating and changing the order. So if not Q, then not P. And biconditional is when you have two arrows and saying P if and only if Q, where the conditional P if P then Q and if Q then P both work. All right, that was lesson five, conditional statements. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask Ms. Kang in class. Otherwise, we'll continue our lesson six, deductive reasoning, in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.